Hey guys, it's Michelle from Cozy Egg, and today is Monday, October 12th, November 12th, 2018, and this is episode 66. I did write it down, and I still messed it up anyway. So, so happy to be back for a regular video. Um, Obviously, through all of dark October, I did my vlogs, um, and so all of those are now uploaded. I finally got the last two uploaded um, over the weekend, I think. So, all caught up, um, but it's been like a month since I talked to you like this, since you saw my face. <laughs> so, um, I'm a little out of practice. But we'll get through it. So let me take a minute to just say, you know, welcome to anyone that's new. If this is your first time watching, I appreciate you checking me out. I know there are approximately 85 million plus tube channels to watch. So um, thanks for checking me out. And if you like what you see, um, I love to see new subscribers, comments, likes, all that good stuff. So, um, and if you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. I appreciate it. Um, we try to have fun here. So, um, I am going to dive into a couple of announcements and then we'll just get right on into stuff. So, um, it has been a while since I mentioned it, so I thought I would take a few minutes and just go through a couple of things. Um, Obviously, October was all about dark October stitching. Um, I have had some folks, this is just, yeah. Um, I have had some folks ask, um, like on Instagram or on Facebook and some of the stitching groups, you know, they saw a reference to dark October or dark 13 stitching and didn't know what that was. If you're here, you probably know what both of those things are. But just in case you're new, let me just go through it. So, um, Dark 13 Stitching um, was started by Emily C., Eclectic Possessions, and I. And um, it was actually Emily's idea. She mentioned in one of her Stitch Mania vlogs, like two years ago or something, she said um, she had planned out her... Um, you know, her starts for Stitch Mania so that she had a, you know, dark, dark and creepy, you know, start for the 13th of the month. And she, you know, made sort of an offhand comment like, I'd really like to, you know, do that on the 13th of every month is work on something dark and creepy. So, you know, I messaged her on Instagram and said, you know, hey, I really love this idea why don't we do that? <laughs> so Dark 13 Stitching was born. Um, and so uh, feel free, anyone can join in. Um, it it doesn't have to be dark. It can be just Halloween-y. Um, but feel free to jump in. Uh, the hashtag that we use on Instagram, Facebook, Flosstube is uh, Dark 13 Stitching. So... And we do it the 13th of every month. So join in, uh, tag your posts, because I'm following that hashtag on Instagram and I love to see what everybody's working on. So, um, and then from that, from Dark 13 Stitching, Dark October Stitching was born. So we decided that for the entire month of October, we would, you know, naturally work on all of our dark and creepy um, pieces that we have worked on throughout the year on the 13th of the month um, and occasionally like this past October you get you know kind of a, a double 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 <laughs> where you have dark 13 stitching in dark October stitching that happens to fall on Friday the 13th so love it love it um, anyway so feel free to jump in, uh, feel free to hashtag dark13stitching. 
which is tomorrow, by the way, um, and dark October stitching. Of course, you can, you know, have dark October stitching in your heart all year, but that's what dark 13 stitching is for. So, um, and it is dark October, not dark Tober. Um, so anyway, so that's what's going on with the dark stitching. And for those of you that are, as I am, enamored with the Carriage House Samplings Hawk Run Hollow pieces, um, there is a hashtag um, that was started like a way long time ago um, for the Village at Hawk Run Hollow Sal, um, which I think is like Village HRH Sal. I'll have to look that up and then I'll it right here um, but we also are using the hashtag for any of your Hawk Run Hollow pieces you can use the hashtag let's all move to Hawk Run Hollow which was a phrase coined by uh, Melissa Golf Sky so thanks Melissa for that and um, from that idea and that hashtag spawned a, uh, a Facebook group. So feel free to check out the Facebook group, Let's All Move to Hawk Run Hollow, and come in there, look for inspiration, show off your stitching on any of your Hawk Run Hollow pieces. Um, it was initially started, you know, so that we could start, the, start a, a village sal a couple years ago, or a year ago, I don't know, time flies. And um, it had, you know, since kind of expanded into any Hawk Run pieces. So Village, Shores, Christmas, Year, Autumn, Houses, Map, any of the Halloween, how could I forget Halloween? So any of those pieces, feel free to come in, show your pieces, show your work, um, see what everybody else is stitching on. And then you can also use the hashtag, let's all move to Hawk Run Hollow. So, I think that's it for the announcements. Maybe? If I think of anything else, we'll throw it in. All right, so I thought I would start with a little bit of stash enhancement. Um, I normally kind of do that at the end, but I'm just gonna do it right here at the front. Just mixing it up. So, I had a couple of things I wanted to show, not a lot, and actually now I'm realizing that there are things that I did not bring in here. I will have to go get those. <clears throat> but we'll we'll deal with this first. So, um, a good friend of mine uh, brought me this fun package um, with goodies for my birthday and of course since I did not do um, since I did not do a video in all of October uh, this has been kind of waiting for me to show you so she gave me these two charts um, one of them was on my uh, my wish list and then um, the other one is a companion piece, so she felt like I needed to have both of them. So the first one is um, Kells Eden by Long Dog Samplers. And so this is uh, obviously an Adam and Eve. And I just love the look of this because it's like, um, you know, an illuminated manuscript. It's got that kind of Celtic artwork um, inscribed. I just love this. She did, um, however, have a caveat to when I stitch this um, that I need to remove the chain and muzzle off of the bear. And I agreed to that um, because I don't think he needs that either. So, Kells Eden, which I'm excited about adding to my Adam and Eve um, pieces, collection, wall. And then the companion piece, which is Kells Critters. 
which is equally fun. Love that. So, both of those were gifted to me. <coughs> and I am still under the weather and um, still coughing like crazy and the weather's changing and all that stuff. So if I do start to have a massive, you know, coughing fit, I have my peppermint oil. <laughs> I also have a cough drop in my pocket. So we will hope that I don't need it. Um, the other thing that um, came into my possession, I bought, uh, was the Hannah Sanderson 1848 sampler by Dutch Treat Designs. So um, when we did the, uh, you know, wish list, the, the, what was that? The stitching wish list. God, my nose is so red. We did the stitching wish list on Instagram um, and put kind of, you know, those pieces that you're really lusting after or want, can't find, whatever. Um, this was one of the samplers that was on that list because up until recently, this was, this only existed in, uh, you know, several parts, you know, uh, in a magazine from like 1991 or some crazy shenanigans. So um, what I love about this is they give you two versions. So the reproduction version, which is on the lighter colored linen, and then the original um, version, which is closer to the original colors of the antique that's on a darker linen. Um, and this is probably the one that I will be doing but I just think it's so so pretty and I love these kind of trees these like kind of diamond trees that have the kind of bargello bargello um, stitching inside them and the butterfly I mean it's just it's so good so I had to have that and then the other thing I'm trying so hard to like knock down my whips and not buy new things and not start new things and blah, 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 blah. Right? As are all of us, except for Michelle Bendy because she's starting everything. So I have been in love with this series since I originally saw it. Um, and I had been sort of ignoring it as one does. I had been trying to just Pretend I had not seen it. Pretend it didn't exist. Until I saw Tracy P's. And that kind of pushed me over the edge. And I think she just had like, you know, she was working on one of these flowers. And I was just like, oh crap. Now I have to have this. And Jesse Marie has been working on this too. Dang it. So, I will probably eventually get all of these, but I decided to start with the first one. And also because um, this one is, you know, love and forever and ever, I thought this might be a perfect piece to stitch for Eric for Valentine's Day or anniversary. Um, Assuming that, you know, at some point, hell will freeze over and I'll actually finish Colonial Garden. So, but I think this would be super pretty in our bedroom. So, all right. And then, I have some fabric that I bought. Quilting fabric. I'm going to have to get that, so, oh, please. Okay, I'm back. And yes, I did change clothes. I actually just took my sweatshirt off, <laughs> so. All right. 
I went to a quilting retreat um, a couple weekends ago. Yeah, not this last weekend, but the weekend before that. And um, there is strategically placed a quilt shop, like basically next door to the quilt retreat space. And we strategically had like a 20% off coupon or something. So, um, I bought some Tula. I couldn't resist. So I bought a couple of pieces from De La Luna. I had to have the skulls. And yes, I have a whole stack of this, but I needed more. Um, and the eyes. And these are showing a little like crazy bright, probably because of my light. Anyway. Um, and then I had to buy some of her new line, Zuma, um, which is gorgeous. Look at that seahorse. And Zuma really um, it gets into like more of the neon colors, which is really kind of fun. So seahorses, stingrays. Which is fun. Um, yeah, see, these don't tell me like what the name of the print is. The waves, and this looks like a Japanese woodcut to me. Um, and if you look right here, it says a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. Jellyfish. Seahorses, whales, seashells, little bitty fish. Jellyfish. And so you know, I'm constantly thinking about what I want to do with my Tula fabrics and like each new line that comes comes <coughs> comes out. Um, and so for Zuma, I really think that I want to do. There's like a big like clamshell quilt, um, like a glam clam quilt, um, which I know sounds terrible, but. I think I really want to do that with Zuma. So, I bought some fat quarters mainly just because I had to have them. You know I will eventually use them. And those all came from um, a shop called So Let's Quilt It. In Dallas or Richardson, or they might be in Richardson. Anyway, Dallas adjacent. Uh, and then the last thing, um, my sweet friend gave me this. She said she saw it and she knew that I just absolutely had to have it. And I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So it's a pin. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it as a pin or if I um, make it into a needle minder, but it's so pretty. And this is um, from Liliella Stitchery. So fun. So, I think that's it for the stash enhancement. So, on to finishes. 
I don't actually have any finishes, but I have some FFOs that I'm excited to show you. So I have been working on trying to get things framed um, because I need to, I'm kind of at that point where I need to redo our gallery wall because I've had so many pieces that I framed that I need to kind of rearrange it. So I'm trying to push to get everything framed so that we can rearrange it before our holiday party. So this is one of the pieces that I framed. This is Halloween Garden, Primitive Needle. And I think I finished this last year during Dark October Stitching. I think I started it the year before, like in the first Dark October, I think is when I started it. And this was a, um, it was a kit that Lisa offered at market one year um, where you get the chart and the linen for it. Um, and so this was on 35 count weeks putty um, with all of the called for colors, which I think were all weeks colors, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, really the only changes that I made to this was um, I rearranged some of the coloring on the letters because the way it was originally charted, it had all, like, all of the orange ones were, like, all kind of lined up right here. So I just spread them out a little bit. Um, but otherwise, this is as charted. I absolutely love it. And so I'm happy that I was able to find a frame that I think is just perfect for it. Because it picks up kind of those gray tones. Um... <coughs> And, um, and it's got this kind of brown with some sort of bronzy highlights in it. Um, this was a, I want to say it was like a $3 frame, $6 frame maybe at the dollar store. Perfect. So that is the first piece that I framed. Um... And then the other piece that I framed was my Salem Remembered. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that all in here without, here, well, that's almost all of it. Um, so I stitched this piece, I think I finished this last September. For the Salem Not Forgotten Cell. And this is also a primitive needle piece. And I stitched it on what I think is 40 count vintage light exemplar by Lakeside. I think it was un it was an unknown piece. Um, So, and I stitched this kind of in my own color conversion because I didn't have the called for threads. So, um, and you may recall, I stitched Susanna Martin's uh, name in Belsois Red Fox because I wanted her name to stand out since um, she is my ancestor. So this frame was actually repurposed. Um, I actually had another piece in this frame and the frame was um, a light pine color. And I decided that I took a real hard look at what I have framed and hanging, what I have out versus what is not out that I want to have out. and you know, what I want to kind of focus on stitching more of. And so one of that, one of those things is I really wanted Salem Remembered up because it was an important piece to me and I really wanted to have it framed and on the wall. Um, as well as I have several primitive needle pieces that are important to me that I really want to focus on finishing or getting framed. And so that's why Halloween Garden got kind of bumped up to the top as well as this one. So, um, 
So the frame was a really, really light colored pine. Um, Eric actually took it and um, did some weathering to it, did some staining to it so that it would look a little more um, aged and a little more interesting than the original. So I got this framed up yesterday and that will go on, um, not actually on the gallery wall here in the hallway. Um, we actually have another hallway where I have um, some family pieces. So like my sampler I stitched for my dad is there. And so I think that's, I think that's where that's gonna go. So that's it for the FFOs. So let's talk whips. Um, obviously, I'm gonna talk stitching whips. So obviously, um, you saw everything I worked on in Dark October, and um, I had, you know, I thought about working on a Dracula book cover a little bit longer, but then I was like, you know what? I'm itching to stitch on some other things that I really want to try to get finished. And the main thing that I really wanna to try to get finished is my anniversaries of the heart. So you may recall that at the beginning of the year, um, my guild does um, what we call magic, which is my annual good intentions contract, where you sign up you know, with a, a piece or several pieces that you wanna have finished by the next January. And so I had two pieces on my list this year. One of them was Mystery Nine, uh, the King's Vegetable Garden, which is my Chatelaine, which I finished. And then the other one is Anniversary of the Heart. And I had kind of written this off, but I got a bee in my bonnet, I guess about mid-October and decided, you know what? I just wanna push and see if I can get it done. Because this is another piece that I'd like to have up and hanging um, with those family pieces. So, I don't know if I'm gonna get it done by January, but I am going to just try to, you know, push and see how close I can get to it by the end of the year. Um, and since we meet on like the first Tuesday of the month, that actually falls on January 1st. So we are not gonna have our January meeting. We're gonna meet in February, which means I actually have until the end of January to try to get this done. So let's see what I can do. So here is the whole piece, excuse the wrinkles, um, but this is what the whole piece looks like right now. And um, so I'm working on the last block of the second row and there is one more row underneath this. So there's uh, three individual blocks and then this last block here is like a two part, a bit, you know, a larger block. So I've been working on this since um, the beginning of November and here is where I'm at. So I am really loving this. I'm really enjoying it. I did make some changes to the called for colors. Um, as I found out in this block, you know, with overnight threads, sometimes the, <coughs> the dye lots are so different from the time that the designer designs it to the time that I get my hands on some or even if it's not a time thing, it's just different dye lots. So I had to do so many changes in this block um, because my threads were just way, way, way too light and I wasn't happy with it. So this time I decided, you know what, if I start to stitch something and it's not working, I'm just gonna rip it out right then and not keep going with it. So I did make some changes. Um, I really wanted that butterfly to be a little more purple. Um, 
And so the outside I did in old purple paint, which is what it calls for. But then the inside of it I did in iris. And I think it turned out really pretty. And I've started the roof of the house. I still need to do the bottom of the tree. Um, but I think this is really coming along. And let me show you. Here's what the whole piece looks like. With all my sticky notes. So this is called Midnight Moonlight Visitor. And that's what it looks like. And this block is actually going to be, so this is Anniversary of the Heart, Blackbird Designs, and this is uh, Pattern 9. So, um, This is the whole layout right there. So see, it's got one, two, three blocks and then this bonus. And I'm working on this one. So, um, you know, each of the different blocks I have um, personalized for, you know, someone in my family. This block is actually going to be um, for my grandmother who was very special to me um, and um, and I also decided last week that um, that I'm actually going to dedicate that block to someone else um, in addition to my grandmother so my um, uh, my mentor my teacher my friend um, uh, Reverend Kay passed away last Sunday and her funeral was this past Saturday. Um, she has been, you know, kind of a driving force um, to me for like 18 years. So um, she passed away and I just felt like as I was stitching on that piece the other day, that I really wanted to kind of, you know, put something in remembrance to her in that block as well. So um, it, it's going to be, you know, dedicated to my grandmother, but then I am also going to have some sort of something in there for Reverend Kay. So uh, that's mostly what I have been working on. But yesterday I got something else out to start on a stitch along. This is in my sugar skull bag. And I don't think I showed you my bag. So this was my, this is my bag. My anniversaries of the heart came in. Um, my friend Sylvia made this and it's got this Liberty of London fabric. And then it's got um, this little horn book with an M as the zipper pull. Um, okay, so sugar skulls. So this is Sampler Sisters of the Thread, also primitive needle. Um, on Emily's last video, she mentioned that she and Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, were going to be starting this on November 11th. And I said, huh, I already have it started so I am going to jump in and stitch it with you so um, they started this last night I pulled mine out last night and I believe um, Tracy P also started it and Judy who is um, jcash77 on Instagram is also starting I was just looking at her post um, just a little while ago where she was picking fabric so, um, okay, so I showed you the piece, <coughs> and I showed this in my, one of my vlogs too, but um, I will show it to you again. So here is mine, and um, as I said, I already had this started, 
I am working from the bottom up. Um, and reason being is that, um, so let me back up. So this piece um, was actually designed by Lisa for, um, for a group of friends. And uh, Lisa provided each of us with this chart um, since that group was the inspiration behind it. So um, my thought when I went, uh, I went to the summer soiree at the attic a couple years ago and I started this um, because I was going to be seeing in person uh, some of the people that are represented here in this bottom section. Um, so she had uh, initials of all of us that were in that group here. Um, and I was going to be seeing in person some of those folks, so I wanted to get them to stitch their initial on my piece. So I quick started this. And then um, while I was there, I had um, them stitch their initials in here. So I stitched the bottom piece, I stitched the angel, and then I went ahead and I put an L here. Um, and I actually did the L in charcoal um, for Lisa because I wanted to make sure that she was represented here as well because in the original piece, she did not represent herself in, uh, in the initial portion. She only had her name up above. Um, so I wanted to make sure that she was represented here. So, at least that's my remembrance of it. I could be wrong, but I wanted to make sure that her L was here and I did it in charcoal to just offset the color a little bit um, to have it stand out. So, um, and I had this part stitched as well, this little band. So last night, this is what I did. And I kind of skipped like the words in here mostly because um, my forest green, forest glade uh, thread that it calls for for that section has gone on walkabout. So I must have stolen it for another project at some point. So I need to find that. So I couldn't do any of the words in here, so I just had to count up. Hopefully it's in the right place. Um, and I am stitching this with called for colors. It calls for a combo of weeks and gas threads. Um, and I am stitching it on the called for fabric, which is 40 count, picture this plus mellow. So most of the colors down here are all kind of shades of green. So it's got like caper, weeks caper and bark, um, excuse me, charcoal um, is in here as well as that forest glade so but I just love it I really do so um, I'm really happy to be working on this again it's been a long time since I had this out and um, my my thought had been that at some point, since some of that group of friends I may, you know, not ever get to meet in person, um, I may send this around and have everyone stitch their own initial. Um, the logistics of that may be a little, eh, because I would be afraid to mail this, but <laughs> what are you gonna do? So that may still happen. Um, but I'll figure that out. I'm just going to work on stitching the rest of it, and then I'll figure that other part out. <coughs> but I may have an opportunity here later, uh, or later in 2019, um, to have another person in person stitch their initial, which would be fun. So anyway, so if you want to join in, if you have this chart, uh, obviously it's primitive needles, so they're hard to come by out of print, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if you have one or can get your hands on one, 
feel free to jump in. And the hashtag that we're using is Sampler Sisters Sal on Instagram. So Sampler Sisters Sal. And yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. And I was realizing last night that this is called Sampler Sisters of the Thread. Here at Sampler Sisters of the Heart. That just tickled me a little bit. So, all right. So at some point, I need to go find my thread. That forest glade. Let's see if I can figure out where that sucker is. So, I'm going to work on that a little bit, and then I'm going to go back to Anniversaries of the Heart and just see if I can knock that out. The other thing I've been working on, which this is my other laminate bag that was made for my birthday. The other thing I've been working on is Stiach. Not a lot, but a little. And I can't even show you what this is supposed to look like because nobody knows yet. Um, but this is all I have. So I was uh, doing my little basting thread to count down to stitch two more of these little guys. So um, I'm still working on week one. I think week five was just released, so I'm way behind. But um, it's fun. I was watching uh, Michelle Bendy do her latest, I think it was her latest stitch with me, and she was stitching on her stiach piece, and oh my god, the colors that she is using are so flippin' fantastic. Really pretty. So, and I really like the color palette I chose, so now I'm like, I need to get a move on and see how mine are gonna show up, you know, and get some more stuff stitched in there. So, all right. Um, the other thing, so I'm sort of segueing into like plans for November, in case you didn't get that. <clears throat> so, anniversary, Anniversaries of the Heart, that is my number one priority. I'm also gonna be working on uh, more of, um, whatever this thing is, Sampler Sisters. I also need to work on Stiach. And then the other thing that I need to work on because I totally forgot about this. <clears throat> the other thing that I need to work on that I volunteered for, um, that I need to kind of have done by the beginning of December, is, um, do you remember last year or two years ago or whenever it was, I think it maybe was two years ago. Um, so my other guild, EGA, uh, <clears throat> so each year we do uh, a, an Opportunity Knox thing for um, seminar where, you know, stuff gets raffled off. And so like guilds will come together and do like, you know, have a thing that they do for Opportunity Knox to raffle off. And so we had been doing ornaments. So like the year that I'm thinking of, it was, you know, these little tree ornaments and um, those got stitched and then finished and then put onto a wreath. Um, last year, I think it was a similar idea. It was like those, um, chalk ornaments, hands-on design, maybe chalk ornaments. I didn't stitch one last year. Um, this year I volunteered to do it again. <clears throat> so this year they're going to do a, it's a Noah's Ark theme. And so we're using, um, several Prairie Schooler, um, charts. I guess there's a couple that are like the Noah's Ark. I don't know. Um, Anyway, I signed up to do the lions. And, you know, of course I did this 
knowing full well that Prairie Schooler designs are deceptive and that will probably take me like eight years to stitch because it's like a million stitches of fill-in. I mean, it doesn't look that bad on the chart, but mm, yeah, deceptive. So uh, the lady that puts these together, man, she's on top of it. So she puts a little picture of what you're, what you're stitching. She makes you this little thread card with all your threads that you need. Uh, you have, you know, the color key, the thread key, obviously. You get the little portion of the chart that you're stitching. Um, and then, you know, your fabric, which she marks as this is the top. So, you know, um, yeah. And all I have to do is stitch it. So, <coughs> yeah. I totally forgot about it. And she sent an email and was like, hey, uh, just checking in to see how everybody's doing. And I was like, oh, crap. Oops. So, all right. So, I uh, need to stitch some lions also. I'm not sure when all this stitching is going to happen. Um, okay. So I think that's it for stitching. And that's also a little, you know, plans for November also. So let's talk about quilting. So I mentioned I went on a quilt retreat a couple weeks ago. So I wanted to show you what I worked on. Um, I had... Uh, so last time I went, I finished a piece, a quilt top, and started a new one. And so this time I worked on, mostly on um, this new quilt top that I had started. And so it's a, it's a, um, it was a craftsy workshop that Tula Pink did back in 2014. Um, so you signed up for the workshop, you got the kit, you got all the instructions, you had Tula there answering questions online, right? All that good stuff. So this has been wrapped up still in the kit packaging since 2014. So I decided it was time to get it out. Um, and so I posted some photos of this on... Instagram, which I will insert here. Just so that you can get an idea of kind of what it looks like, because you're probably not going to get the sense of that here. Um, but I will give you a sense of the size. So these are diamonds, obviously. And so you start with the center diamond and then you're basically kind of log cabining it, you know, around it. Um, so I got all of the, there's 22 full diamonds and I got all of them with the first round on them. And then I think I got about 16 done, um, with the second round. So I'll show you a few others. They're just so pretty. And so different in color from the nightshade quilt that I was working on. These are um, much brighter. And of course, everything kind of looks neon in this light, but I wanted to have a little extra light since it's already dark outside. So anyway, you get the idea. Um, so I worked on those and um, like I said, I think I got about 16 out of 22 of the uh, diamonds completely finished. And so my next step will be to, uh, to finish doing the last round on the other diamonds. And then I have some partial diamonds that need to be done. Um, and then I can start 
putting it all together. So I'm super excited about that. I love how this look looks. I'm actually a little surprised it's coming together as quickly as it is. Now I've got fuzz like everywhere from those jelly rolls. Um, I'm actually surprised it's coming together as quickly as it is, but I'm not gonna complain. So um, I worked on that. The other thing that I have been working on is my Anchors Away um, quilt, also Tula Pink, um, in her saltwater line. <coughs> and I think that I showed this a while back. Um, I'll put a picture of the quilt here. Um, and so I started, I cut out all the squares like a while back and then I decided to use this as a leaders and enders um, project. So basically, um, like when I'm working on my diamond quilt and I'm going to sew a seam, um, I just put, you know, I sew one of these in front of it and behind it. So I'm sort of simultaneously working on two projects at once. Um, but it's a great way to, um, you know, to not have to keep stopping and starting your thread. You can just sort of, you know, chain piece everything. And for something that's maybe a little tedious, uh, like this one is, um, or would be if I wasn't doing it this way, um, it's a really simple way to get stuff done. So I had been working on that and basically just sewing, you know, strips together <coughs> and then sort of keeping these, you know, with, because the way that the pattern is written out is it's by rows. So I've just been sort of keeping, you know, each of these with its pattern sheet uh, to kind of keep myself straight. But then the more of these that I saw, you know, pile up, the more I thought, I really just kind of want to sew those together. So I sewed this one together, and then I sewed this one together. And then I sewed this one together. <laughs> which was not the plan, but I couldn't stop myself. And I just, I love how this is coming together. And I love that, you know, when it's all said and done, it's gonna make that cool anchor and it's gonna be amazing. So it is, um, it's a little tedious and it's, I don't, I'm not gonna show you the whole pattern, but just to give you a sense, like, I mean, it's, so this, so this, so this, you know, I mean, you're just like, and this is just part of one row. So, um, it's a little tedious and it's a little, you know, kind of, you have to be super organized to know where you're at and what you're doing. Um, but it's been fun to kind of work on that as a little side project. Like I'm not really working on it, but I am working on it. So, Anyway, that's what I worked on quilting wise. Um, and I think we have another quilting weekend planned for maybe February. So I may or may not sew before then, but at least I know in February I will be sewing. So, uh, that's what I've been working on there. And my EPP, which I forgot to bring in here. So Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, and I have been working on doing, working on an EPP project um, 30 minutes a day. And I kind of got a little off kilter with that, but I'm back working on it. And I'm working on my hex on the beach. Um, so I'll make sure to bring and show you that next time. Uh, the other thing that I did was I got out my knitting. 
I guess because it was fall, it was calling to me. So I got this out and I worked on it a little bit, not a whole lot, but um, I am working on the Way It Shawl number two um, by Susan B. Anderson. And that is kind of a picture of the whole, what it'll look like when it's done. So I am knitting this with um, Miss Babs Yowza. Um, and this colorway is called Joan of Arc. It's like the perfect fall colorway with all those oranges and reds and pinks and yellows and charcoals and grays. It's so pretty. And I am knitting this on my signature size nines. So, it's kind of big, so it's a little hard to pull out, but you get the idea. So, really fun. I love how the colors show up. And I have my Sucra Sucra miniatures. Um, progress keeper cupcake this is one of her hocus pocus cupcakes so it's got a skull on it and a witch's hat so fun I think I bought that last year no I guess I bought well maybe it was last year so I started this um for Dark October two years ago, and still have a ways to go. But it was calling to me, so I got it back out, and I enjoyed the time that I worked on it. Um, I had watched um, some Vine videos, and um, then also seeing uh, Evergreen Needles video where she was knitting and sharing what she was knitting on made me want to get mine out so i did so that's the other thing i worked on um and then the only other thing i wanted to share is reading so i'm still reading a discovery of witches this is actually a reread um still enjoying it very much i'm about halfway through and um it, i just <clears throat> it's kind of the perfect book to read at this time of year so I'm really glad that I pulled it back out and I've been enjoying reading it um, so I think that's I think that's it for me um, I got a new job so yay I got a new job um, I'm still at the same company but I'm moving to another group um, they, uh, actually approached me and asked me if I was interested. <coughs> so, um, I'm super excited for it. I think it's going to be a good move. I think it's going to be a good change. Um, I'm just kind of in the midst of doing my transition from my current job to my new job. So, Right now I'm kind of working two jobs, but also still doing my old boss's job, so three jobs. But that's part of the reason why I needed to leave, it's because I'm doing her job. But anyway, um, so yeah, so I have a new job. I am hopeful that this means I will not have a whole lot of, you know, nights and weekends where I'm on conference bridges at crazy times of the night. Um, 
I'm really hoping that this is going to be a little more, a little less chaotic. Like I'm fine with busy, but chaotic is, that's just gotten to be too much. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. And um, I can't believe it's already almost Thanksgiving. So, yeah. So that's what I plan to work on. Um, I'm hoping to get some more fra things framed um, and hoping to get some more things worked on, especially anniversaries of the heart. So, yeah, so that's it for me. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for um, enjoying long videos and um, Please, you know, subscribe, like, comment, whatever. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Cozy Egg. Um, and, yeah, thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.